Therapist. I'm Bob Schrupp, physical therapist. Brad Heineck, physical therapist. And we are the most famous physical therapists on the internet. In our opinion, of course, Bob. This one thing can stop your sciatica. And it's so simple. It is. It is, Bob. And this is something both you and I have dealt with in the clinic with uh, many patients over the years that we correct and can make significant pro progress. I thought you were going to say something like, uh, this is something you and I are both simple. I mean, I thought you were heading down that path. I don't know why, but... No, that, that may be tomorrow. <laughs> okay. All right, by the way, if you are new to our channel, please take a second to subscribe to us. That one kind of fell flat, didn't it? Yeah. Uh, please take a second to subscribe to us. We provide videos on how to stay healthy, fit, pain-free, and we upload every day. Also, if you get the chance, go over to the Facebook and like us. we got something cool going on, Brad, again. Not giving away mattress right now. That that's that should be done already, by Sure. The way. We are giving away five TENS units. Oh, nice. A uh, TENS unit is for pain, so if you're having pain, you're going to want to sign up for this, and it, it, there's just going to be a link below when we when we when we do this. Great, yeah. So I should anyone on this on this YouTube even? Okay, excellent. and Facebook. Sure. Oh, Bob and Brad, right? <laughs> so. Carry on. All right. Okay, Bob. Sciatica. One simple thing. People have been waiting. They struggle through everything else we just went through. Uh, so what is it? And we want to talk about as sciatica. Oftentimes, we get Sam to help us. It is, the origin is from the low back. If we look right in here, we got a little piece of blue tape. It's usually L4, 5, uh, S1. Could be up a little bit higher, but a nerve is getting... L3, L4. Sure. A nerve is getting pinched here, which sends a pain, numbness, tingling, whatever the symptoms may be going down. Typically, almost always, one of the legs. Um, so. What happens here can really affect sciatica. Right. And simple things. This is the source. Right. A bulging disc is very common to think. And simply leaning forward, like Sam is right now, when you're bending over the sink, brushing your teeth, can really affect that bulge, getting that sciatica worse. And make it worse, right? And that's that's the whole thing. And if you think about it, even when you sit. Sure. You're, you're, you're kind of you often in that slumped position. Right. And you can make the sciatica worse. Right. So, uh, bending and lifting. People say, well, I, I don't lift up anything heavy. You know, I'm not doing any lifting. I'm just picking something off the floor, maybe a, a, a pencil. A pencil, right. right. But that, we're going to show you in just a couple minutes how much stress this low back goes through just with bending over without picking anything up. Even if you bend your knees okay. like people okay. think is corrects the problem. That's right. Right. We're going to show that as wrong. well. Can you get right on here? This blue tape represents the, the area. If we bend forward, watch what happens with that tape. If say, Sam's going to bend forward to pick up that pencil, the tape right there is being stressed. We'll show it on this one, Brad. Yeah, now we'll, we'll just find bench better. This, this yeah. spine here is pretty solid. So as I bend forward, you can see the tape pulls loose. Right. Because there's so much more stress along the ligament here that I guess they can put uh, right. the through ligament. But it's also putting stress on the back of the disc. Right. And that's really the key. The tape is just... A uh, symbol. A similar concept. So, how much stress goes through your back if we could measure it? Well, scientifically, we take a lot of equipment, but we've got such a simple way to figure it out to give a good example. We can give you, a, yeah, you can get a, a visual of how much stress there's on your spine when you do a simple task of just bending forward. So, Bob is going to be. The model. He's the guinea pig for me. I want you to put your forearms like that, Bob, okay? Now, this stick, if you see right here, it says spine, represents a spine. And these, my hands, represent the muscles of the low back. Right. So, if this is a spine, and I'm here, and I'm going to bend forward to pick up, to pick up this little red pen right there, if I drop that pen on the ground and I want to bend forward to pick it up, I'm going to bend forward. My spine is about horizontal, so I can literally pick up the pen and then come back up and pick up. Very simple task. People do it every day. There's no pain with it. But if you've got a bulging disc, or a herniated, or a herniated disc, or a back problem, how much pressure goes and how much work do these muscles have to go through to pick up that pen? Okay, so here we go, Bob. I've got to get my stool. I'm going to guide you through this. So, imagine here's the spine, the head here, arms here. He's looking that way, and the pen gets dropped, and he picks it up. Bob picks up that pen. Imagine the arm's picking it up. Go, go with me, Bob. Don't go ahead. All right. He's got the pen, picks it up. 
There you go. Here. Got the no problem. Right. Okay. Now, that's not a bad deal, but all we got is a spine. Now, when you bend over and pick it up, you got the weight of your head and your arms to pick that pencil up. So we need something to represent the weight of the arms. Now, I'm just going to use two little three-pound weights and put them on the spine about where the arms would go. Say these are small arms. Yeah, these are small arms. Okay, Bob, go over and pick that up again. Okay, yep, you got to get to the, uh, watch out, don't want to bump the head. Don't bump the head on the floor. We don't want to have a, con a concussion going on. And pick that up. Now, if you look at Bob's wrist, his veins are already starting to, yeah, I'm come, working, to come out. I'm working already, and these are little arms. Right, so the weight of the arms, just to bend over, make a significant change on the amount of work the low back has to go through. But wait, there's more, because we cannot see the, the pen on the ground, because there's no head. We've got to get a head on there, and the head weighs, you know, around 10 pounds or so. It depends on how big you are. We don't even have a 10 pound weight here. We're going to have a small headed person. There's about four pounds. We got Tyrannosaurus Rex arms and we got a small head. <laughs> pin head. Pin head. So you go over and stay right there just for a Oh, moment. good lord. So Bob, Bob's got strong wrists. He's actually, look at it. He's got yeah. bulging your biceps. Oh, I got to come back up. Come back up. <laughs> up, 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 up. So that. Obviously, Bob was not faking it. And right. it, it. It was a really a lot of work. Now you have to add the weight of your trunk and your chest and your lungs. And if you put all that up there, there was no way Bob could even and I'm begin. Gonna go down. I'm gonna go. Yeah, down. You yeah. go like that. So down goes Bob. A little forward flexion stresses the back. A little bit more stresses that low back a lot more. Even if you're in good posture, and right? You're trying to keep the back straight, right? And that's why often we have you bend this way instead because it'd be like going like this you know, right which is a lot easier than going like this exactly so then we work on body mechanics on how someone's going to pick up that pen like this versus like this even if you bend your knees but you go like this it still really puts a lot of stress on that back and that sciatic and just get flared up every time you do that the same with i'm in a chair if i'm like this there's stress on that low back if I'm straight up and down like this, there's less stress on the low back. Right, so. exactly. So that posture, the curvature, how you use your back. Now this is one thing to, I use with patients to or train them. Training device, yeah. Right. I'll have them take the booyah stick or a straight stick that they have at home, and I'll have them. You can't say booyah unless you go booyah. Booyah! I don't know that booyah. It is a nice stick. They work great. But we're going to take a, something like this. Have the head touch right there. It's going to touch my back and it's going to touch my sacrum. He's got three points of contact here. He's got the head, mid back, and the sacrum. Right. And that's teaching him to lift correctly. Right. And I'll show you how. So feet wide apart, and I have to maintain that contact. If I bend forward, my head comes away from it. It's no good. We got to maintain. Mostly, it'll be down to one point of contact. See, he's just got one point yeah. versus the three. So we keep that. And then I'll have my patients literally do squats. So strengthening yeah. your legs, training you good posture and body mechanics of lifting, and it works out very well. So I'll have them do 10 of those three times a day, and it starts to form good habits. And then usually what we do, we tape it to them, and they walk around with this on, and wherever they go, they're, they're reminded. Yeah, we, we use duct tape. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> just We're kidding. Sorry. Actually, I do say that to my patients, and I say, just imagine, I just say, just imagine that this is duct tape to you, and if you have that visual, it, it can help. Well, we used to, I mean, I have done this where I've taken tape and run it up and down their spine. Oh, sure. And, and uh, take it across, and when if they bend forward, it actually, the tape breaks. Yeah, and it's skin. Yeah. And you can feel that tape pull, so it's a really good training tool. My first McKenzie instructor did this with one of our patients who had sciatica, and, and she taped him up the day, you know, the, the day she saw him, and he kept it on until the next day. It was a great training device for him to know what, during the day, if he was running into it, he was bending. Sure. So, I mean, yeah. Yeah, we're often yeah. surprised. We've got a video on that too, as a matter of fact. On taping? Yeah, we yep. do. Yep, it's and the older one. I, you know, by the way, if you're going to kick it beyond this, and I mean, this is to try to prevent your sciatica from getting worse. If you want to treat your uh, sciatica, also you're going to use our McKenzie technique, right. um, which 
we didn't invent, we do, but we demonstrate the McKenzie technique for sciatica. Right. You go Bob and Brad, just type it in, Bob and Brad, McKenzie. Right. And we've got a whole playlist. We've got probably at least 10 different videos on different aspects of uh, sciatica. Uh, yep, sciatica and McKenzie method. And it's definitely going to help you get through your sciatica. But you, you, need to, you need to keep this component in mind because no matter what treatment you do, if you go back and injure your back again by bending forward yep. incorrectly or sitting incorrectly, you're just going to be back to square one. Right. It's very simple, but very important to maintain a good, healthy back and get it back to normal. All right. Anything else, Bob? Well, booyah! Booyah! Yeah. Booyah. Yeah. There you go. Booyah! All right. Thanks for watching.